2020, Lambda School had raised $122 million in venture capital funding, promising to revolutionize education with their Learn Now, Pay Later model. The promise was irresistible. 12 weeks of intensive training for a six-figure tech career. And it worked. Lambda School alone grew to over 2,500 students in under two years. But today, there's a completely different story. They're now banned from offering student loans, and their CEO is barred from the education lending industry for a decade. Back in 2019, this seemed impossible. Coding boot camps were the ultimate success story, graduating tens of thousands of developers a year and generating hundreds of millions in revenue. But today, boot camps are all but dead. Most high flying boot camps have, in the last few years, shut down or considerably downsized. One boot camp was even revealed to have just one person land a job five months after graduation out of their entire cohort, and it wasn't even a junior role. They just got hired by their existing employer. This wasn't just the effect from a tech market downturn. It was a systematic implosion of an entire industry built on fundamentally broken economics and false promises. Today, I'm breaking down exactly how the bootcamp bubble burst and why it was always doomed to fail. To understand how spectacularly bootcamps failed, you need to understand how perfectly they actually started. In 2012, three guys in San Francisco launched something called Dev Bootcamp the first coding bootcamp in history. The timing was perfect as the tech industry was slowly recovering from the 2008 financial crisis. And with a new wave of startups coming from app development and cloud, companies desperately needed programmers. But universities weren't producing nearly enough computer science graduates to meet demand. Companies like Facebook and Google were growing so fast that they'd hire anyone who could write basic JavaScript. Dev Bootcamp then saw an opportunity. Instead of waiting for universities to catch up, they'd find smart people from different backgrounds, liberal arts majors, hard tech engineers, that wanted to change careers and teach them to code in just 19 weeks for around $12,000. You didn't need a degree, you just had to be willing to learn. And within months, copycats were everywhere. General Assembly launched in New York, App Academy started in San Francisco, each had the same pitch, learn to code fast, get hired faster, no four-year degree required. And the growth was pretty insane. By 2013, all boot camps combined graduated about 2,000 students, and by 2016, that number hit 18,000. And by 2023, boot camps were churning out 60,000 graduates annually, a 30X increase in a decade. And the business model actually did work. Students paid 10 to 20K for eight to 16 weeks of training, and then landed jobs paying 65,000 to $100,000 in starting salaries. It was many times a 300 to 400% return on investment in under six months, much better than most college degrees that would take four years and cost twice as much. But early boot camps weren't just lucky with timing. They were actually good at what they did. While universities taught theoretical computer science, algorithms, zeta structures, academic theory, boot camps focused on practical skills and frameworks companies were using, like Ruby on Rails, JavaScript, and Python. Students learned by building real projects and not by solving abstract math problems. But more importantly, boot camps were actually selective. They required aptitude tests, coding challenges, and extensive interviews, and some had acceptance rates below 10%. They only wanted students who could actually succeed. And so the results spoke for themselves. Themselves. Top boot camps consistently placed 90% of their graduates within six months, and boot camps like App Academy were so confident they offered a job guarantee. If you didn't get hired, you wouldn't even have to pay tuition. But the real turning point came in 2017 when a 27 year old named Austin Allred launched Lambda School. Allred had a radical idea. What if students paid nothing up front and only paid after they got jobs? He called it an income share agreement. Students would pay 17% of their salary for two years, but only if they landed a job paying over. 50k. If they didn't get hired, they owed nothing. It was brilliant marketing as a school literally would not make money unless students succeeded. Lambda went through Y Combinator and immediately caught the attention of Silicon Valley VCs, and the money started pouring in. Lambda raised $4 million in 2018, then $30 million in 2019, and then $74 million in 2020. And all in all, Lambda School had raised $122 million and grew to 2,500 students with 169 instructors and staff. The media called them the future of education, and for a brief moment, it seemed like they cracked the code. Boot camps could democratize education, eliminate student debt, and create a meritocratic pathway to tech careers. But underneath the success stories, the cracks were starting to emerge. While Lambda School was busy raising millions and generating headlines, something was going very wrong behind the scenes. The company that promised to only make money when students succeeded was systematically lying about whether students were actually succeeding. Lambda's marketing was pretty aggressive. They advertised placement rates of 85% or higher with graduates landing jobs at top tech companies. The website was filled with success stories of career changing, but internal data told a different story. According to Lee 
state company documents, only about 30% of Lambda's 2020 graduates land qualifying jobs in the first half of the year. And the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau launched an investigation and found that Lambda had systematically misrepresented job placement rates, touting numbers as high as 86% when internal metrics showed closer to 50% on average, with some cohorts as low as 30%. But the placement rate lies were just the tip of the iceberg. Lambda's supposedly aligned incentives were completely broken. To improve cash flow, the company was quietly selling about 50% of their ISA contracts to hedge funds and investors at steep discounts. Think about what this means. Lambda told students that they would only get paid if the students landed jobs, but they were actually getting paid upfront by selling those payment obligations to Wall Street investors. The school had already gotten their money, whether students succeeded or failed was now someone else's problem. This caused the regulatory hammer to start falling in 2021 when the state of California ordered Lambda to cease operations until they acquired proper licensing. And then in 2024, the CFPB delivered the final blow. They didn't just fine Lambda, they banned the company from offering ISAs or loans entirely and barred CEO Austin Allred from the education lending industry for a decade. By then, Landa had already rebranded as the Bloom Institute of Technology in a desperate attempt to shed their toxic reputation, but it was too late. They had already cut 50% of their staff in 2022 and are reportedly still burning through investor cash while finding a sustainable business model. But Landa's spectacular failure wasn't just about one bad actor. It exposed fundamental flaws in the entire bootcamp model that made the industry's collapse inevitable. First, boot camps had no competitive moat whatsoever. Every school essentially taught the same curriculum. JavaScript, Python, web development frameworks. There was no proprietary technology, no unique methodology, no barrier to entry. Any founder with a marketing budget could start a boot camp. And unlike universities, boot camp certificates carried zero institutional weight. A Stanford computer science degree opens doors for decades while a certificate from XYZ Coding Academy is forgotten the moment hiring managers see experienced candidates in the job market. If a boot camp wanted to scale and grow its reputation, it had to let more students into the program, thereby ironically decreasing the value of their brand. The financing models were also fundamentally broken, starting with the income share agreements. ISA suffered from massive adverse selection. Confident students who expected high salaries paid tuition up front, leaving boot camps with riskier students in the income share pool. And unlike traditional loans, boot camps had limited recourse for collection. So many boot camps shifted to deferred tuition agreements through third party financers. But this made things worse. These were traditional debt that students owed regardless of job outcomes while boot camps got paid up front. The school's revenue was now completely disconnected from student success. And this misaligned incentive structure helps explain why boot camps then operated like aggressive marketing companies that happened to teach code. They spent massive amounts on customer acquisition, elaborate sales funnels, webinar sequences, persistent follow-up campaigns, and the focus was getting bodies in the door, not educational outcomes, which led to enrolling students regardless of their actual aptitude for programming. The first dominoes fell in 2017 when two industry pioneers, Dev Bootcamp and the Iron Yard, suddenly shut down. Dev Bootcamp's president was brutally honest about why they closed. We simply cannot reach a sustainable business model without compromising our quality. In other words, the only way to make money was to cut corners on education, which would destroy the very outcomes that justified the business model. Employers started complaining that bootcamp quality was declining. A New York Times piece highlighted hiring managers finding many bootcamp graduates unprepared for actual work. Work. But the problem wasn't just rushed curriculum and inexperienced instructors, it was a fundamental mismatch of expectations. Most boot camps undersold the actual effort required to succeed, while they marketed 12 week transformations. The reality demanded 15 to 20 hours per week of study, plus aggressive job searching with hundreds of applications. Only a small percentage of students were willing to put in this level of commitment. But boot camps kept enrolling students who expected to magically land jobs just by completing the program. This created a vicious cycle where schools couldn't be honest about the difficulty without scaring away customers. So they kept marketing unrealistic timelines while quietly lowering standards to improve graduation rates. The result was graduates who completed programs but lacked the depth of knowledge employers actually needed. And so all the ingredients for disaster were in one place. Oversaturation, declining quality, regulatory issues. The only question was what would trigger the collapse. The answer came in 2022 when the music finally stopped. In 2020, COVID-19 gave boot camps an unexpected lifeline. Remote learning went mainstream, tech demand exploded, and boot camps seemed unstoppable again. 
again. But in 2022, when the Fed raised interest rates and remote work period had ended, tech companies started running layoffs and suddenly bootcamp grads weren't competing for jobs against other career changes anymore. They were competing against ex-Google engineers. Developer job postings dropped 30% while AI tools started automating an exact coding tasks bootcamps were teaching. See, while bootcamps were flawed in many different ways, the biggest flaw had to be their dependency on a very hot job market. Bootcamps were essentially middlemen betting that tech hiring would continue indefinitely. They had no diversified revenue streams, no research arms, no endowments, and if tech hiring slowed down, they had no plan B to sell their students. And the collapse was swift and merciless. A bootcamp called Code Up shut down overnight in December 2023, abandoning students mid-program. Other bootcamps like Code Fellows, Kenzie Academy, Momentum Learning, all followed within months, and everyone in the ecosystem collapsed as well. Career Karma laid off a third of their staff, 2U exited the bootcamp business entirely, and Hack Reactor shut down their part-time program. The math had become impossible. Record CS graduates plus tens of thousands of bootcamp graduates plus hundreds of thousands of laid off engineers all competing for the same shrinking pool of entry level jobs. An industry that seemed unstoppable had been completely destroyed overnight. One of the biggest lessons that I've taken away from the bootcamp collapse is realizing how venture capital growth is fundamentally incompatible with education. VCs demand exponential scaling. 100% to 200% growth year over year. But education doesn't scale like software. When Dev Bootcamp had 20 students and carefully selected instructors, they could maintain the 90% job placement rates. But when Lambda School tried to scale the 2,500 students with the same model, the quality inevitably suffered as they hired inexperienced instructors, shortened the curriculum, and relaxed admission standards. The VC money that was supposed to fuel growth actually destroyed the very outcomes that justified the business model. And while tech companies can fake it till they make it and iterate their way to success, education requires consistent outcomes from day one because you're dealing with people's careers and overall livelihoods. In this day and age, institutional value matters more than anyone had actually realized, as a university degree, for example, has built credibility over generations. But even universities themselves are facing headwinds. With declining enrollment and questions about return on investment, students are really questioning the opportunity costs. One thing I have noticed though is that accelerated training isn't actually dead, it's just actively evolving. The survivors themselves have learned from their failures. General Assembly has pivoted to corporate training contracts instead of chasing individual students. Springboard now focuses on part-time flexible programs for working professionals. The future belongs to specialized programs targeting skills with genuine sustained demand and successful programs are integrating with existing institutions instead of trying to replace them. The new model is more honest about limitations and instead of promising six-figure salaries in 12 weeks, successful programs focus on sustainable career paths and realistic expectations. They're building for the long term and not just the next funding round. And while boot camps have collapsed, we've seen the birth of another factor in education, artificial intelligence. And some of the most interesting things are happening in how it's solving education's core problem. For example, instead of hiring hundreds of instructors and scaling with overhead, AI can now provide personalized tutoring, instant feedback, and adaptive coursework at a fraction of the cost. This means we can finally build sustainable education without the broken economic that destroyed boot camps. No more $15,000 programs that require massive marketing budgets and venture capital. AI instead lets us deliver better education for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands. That's why I'm building Outscale AI. It's an AI program that costs a fraction of what the boot camps charged, all while integrating AI into its personalized curriculum. The amazing thing about building an AI today is that you can do a lot of stuff with personalization, not only on the education side, but also in terms of the building of what you want AI to be. In the program, we're building customized projects that are adapted to to your background while also experimenting with things like AI tutors to kind of answer questions throughout the course. The same technology that's disrupting coding is now also revolutionizing how we're actually teaching it. If you want to be part of the exponential curve, that is artificial intelligence and LLMs nowadays, please join me in checking out the course. For the price of a few textbooks, we're helping anyone with a goal of upskilling into AI engineering without debt, broken promises, or thousands of dollars. I had so much fun while actually building it, and I'm really excited to share it with you. If you like the video, please like and subscribe, add your comment, appreciate your feedback, always.